hold it. Can LGBTQ and Christians see eye to eye from middle ground? Very interesting video. Now, here's the thing. There are a lot of LG there are a lot of LGBTQ Christians. And as a society, this guy's face is just fucking killing me right now. <laughs> Sorry. As a, as a society, we've become a lot more accepting. Now, here's the thing. There are a lot of very traditional religious people. And so the most traditional religious people are going to always be... Um, they're always going to be homophobic or transphobic to some extent. That's kind of the reality. But most people, at least in my experience, are people who take the Bible with a grain of salt. They're they're very they, they love God and they appreciate the, it's like my mother and you know loves the Bible very religious individual but like they don't take it they take it with a grain of salt and they have to because my mom is a, is an independent strong independent woman who don't need no man uh, raised me single mother and the Bible quite literally talks about women as objects and being less than men and so you have to separate some of the words from the fundamentals of religion. And if you could do that, I think that that is like a really good way to set a very positive moral stance because you have to do it. You can't be a devout. You can't be somebody who looks at the Bible as like an objective truth. You need to look at it as an interpretation and you need to also understand that some of the lot, some of it's just dated. Uh, my mother's perspective, and this is a perspective that I have is that if there is a God, well, she believes there is one, but if there is a God, um, that those words in the Bible are not all his. I just I would just reject the notion that the, he could have possibly created the, 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 everything in the Bible. And the more uh, the conclusion I would come to more is that like he created a Bible, and then we played telephone tag by remaking new Bibles that were more uh, and more um, used to control a population rather than to speak the truth of God. Right, that's the way that I would look at it, uh, you know, if God does exist, because there's no fucking way that I would ever align myself with some kind of a, an ideology that puts women um, and gay people below everybody else. So let's look and we'll see what kind of uh, religious individuals or Christians, but what kind of religious individuals we've got here. This is a physical manifestation of love. This is glorious and beautiful, and any God that dude's definitely gay. God, which denies me for this, I don't want to have a part of. I'm just going to say, the girl with the blue hair, probably a devout Christian. On the left-hand side, can I have my LGBT folks? On the right-hand side, can I have my conservatives? Really? That dude's... The guy, this guy's gay. Wait, he is gay. Oh, okay. I thought he was like one of those like secret... Like secretly homosexual, openly conservative people. That's how I read him. I'm surprised. These are... These are the... Wait, this is traditional marriage. This doesn't say... Okay, let's just watch. There are times when I feel uncomfortable expressing my views around sexuality. What? Huh? Honestly, I would say yes nowadays because like the conversation around um, sex when it comes to trans people will get you labeled as transphobic. If you merely suggest like, listen, I respect and I fight for trans rights, but I wouldn't sleep with one, a trans person, you're considered transphobic uh, by, I would say the more performative voices in the trans community. And it's not, I would say that this isn't an, an, a generally accepted trans perspective, except for on the internet where the loudest, most obnoxious people um, can honestly, uh, will be listened to more than anything else. And they'll also diminish the community that, they, that they're in. I get uncomfortable primarily because the bromance of like, well, there's two girls, who's the boy? And then it really just breaks the ice as it's like, there isn't supposed to be a boy. There's usually a masculine, there, there, there usually is a masculine and feminine figure in every relationship. There, I do my best to break the ice with the comedic deflection, which I've learned is she looks like a, a self-defense mechanism. This person, I don't know if they identify as a woman. I think that they do because they said they're lesbian. That's definitely a more masculine individual. Like comedy, only, only... Only masculine people are funny, bro. Men. You want to know why? Because you don't need... Men are ugly. And you you need to be funny to get fucking... To have sex. Nobody would fuck me if I wasn't funny. Women don't need to be funny. You know what I mean? Just saying. It's true. Mechanism, right? so, 
I, I come from a very conservative community. Oh, see, I knew so, that. Read him. You know, it just wasn't talked about. Read him to Phil. The most conversation with about are actually my family, which is really weird because I came out to my parents because my dad was going to be leading the protests at the Pride Festival that my boyfriend wanted me to go to. Oh my God! So, uh, what a fucking story! Uh, I'm a pastor as well, bro. That guy's got a. That guy's is a very interesting sh story. Um, I'm also a community leader in Boyle Heights, and in that community, there's a large um, LGBTQ presence. So there's that fear of really coming out and say what I believe, because I do love everybody, and I don't want to be pushed to the side just because I have a certain feeling about, you know, any topic really. I just wanted to say too, and you know, it's not the beliefs that sometimes I have a problem with, or I think people have a problem with in general. It's just like the actions from the beliefs. So like, it's. So this question was, I'm sorry, I'm at 157. Um, this question was. There are times when I feel. There are times when I feel uncomfortable expressing my views around sexuality. So like, it's very interesting that that person doesn't feel uncomfortable expressing their views around sexuality. That leads me to believe that they're in a very, in a very accepting community, to have beliefs, like local community. But if we like can be loving in our beliefs and you know how, how our actions, which makes come. sense as to why she's walking around with blue as a blue person, <laughs> uh, because you'd have to, and this is actually a real thing. If you feel that comfortable being that expressive about you, your sexuality and who you are, um, then you must live in a very accepting community, which means that you're probably not as uh, like specifically targeted or um, dismantled or oppressed for your identification. From those beliefs, and like I love that we're having this conversation, you know, like trying to breach those, like build a bridge. <laughs> Some sins are worse than others. I I, I know that I'm, I'm going off of a tangent right now, but I feel like this is something that I've needed to talk about for a very long time because I don't know if they're going to talk about here, and that's pride parades because they mentioned that his dad was protesting a pride parade. A lot of conservatives issue with pride parades. Well, a lot of conservatives issues. Some conservatives issues are that they hate gay people. But some people nowadays, especially, uh, their issue with pride parades is how overly sexualized and how normalized it is for fetish to be present in the community. And it's a, a struggle that I have as well because I, I, I think that people need to be looking at pride festivals as a celebration to the LGBTQ heroes of, of the world, right? Uh, or yeah of the world because whether you like it or not whether you want to hear this or not like there are lgbtq heroes if you are somebody who walks around and advocates for lgbtq rights especially back in the day where you would have violence committed onto you if you did uh protest and fight for your rights you, you you're saying that you're going to face you're you're allowing yourself to face violence whether you fa you're allowing yourself to be subjected to potential violence in order to fight for something that you believe in. And so I believe that that's somebody that would be worth uh, being considered a hero. Um, unfortunately, it does get taken over by a lot of overly sexualization in the community. And what I would say is that the re and this, there's a little bit of a historical background here that I don't think that we talk about. Historically speaking, a lot of gay people um, were, were they would pretend that they weren't because of how oppressive it was to be considered openly gay. You wouldn't be able to get a job and you would be ostracized from your community. And so what happens is a lot of gay men specifically uh, will generally marry women and have kids, love a wife and the kids and this and the other thing. But on the times that they can, they would they would historically leave their home uh, and go out to like a gay bar a town over or so. A, gay, a bar that gay people knew was a gay bar, but most other people didn't know. And so they would go to um, these gay bars and then they would go there and they would party. And so my understanding is a lot of the overly sexualization uh, of the LGBT community kind of stems from this culture that was created around, it's created around having to sneak around and hide your sexuality. And then when you finally got to a space where you were accepted, you were so sexually repressed that you would like how your sexual repression would basically explode and you would start, you know, obviously being sexually provocative. And so I understand where it comes from and why it is so heavily associated with pride parades. However, I will say again, I think that it would be better if they focus more on the, the educational aspect rather than the overly sexualization, because I don't think that it's a good message to teach people that there should be a, an association with being gay um, and over sexualization because there isn't other than these uh, set of conditions that I did just explain that would force people to have that association. But moving forward, like gay people don't have, not all have the same problem where like they're so repressed, some do still, um, that they can't express themselves. And so like it would be better to move forward and not be so like adamant on a culture of sexualization because without that uh, pushing of that culture, you're not going to see as many people who identify as LGBTQ 
be so openly sexual, like sexual. Than yeah. others. And yes, yeah, some sins are worse than others. How the, how the fuck you have to sit down? Like murder is much worse In than the eyes of you know. Um, and a God, lot. Uh, our worship. I, I believe that any sin um, separates us from Him because he's the only dead. acceptable murder is a, a murdering a furry. Okay. And impure. But at the same time, I think there are certain sins that will have greater consequences. Yeah. Yeah, I, I resonate with that. For me, it would be, you know, killing another human is the worst. That's it. Also, it Venn diagrams into abortion. Taking the life of oh, another she, is she pro is life? Is huge. Can I ask well, you to this? Uh, where do you, do you go? all see homosexuality as a sin? Yes. And if so, where on that scale? I don't think. Um, a homosexual tendency or an attraction to somebody of the same gender is a sin. Um, I think that's a natural feeling. Very, I know I he's going to go. I think when you start engaging um, in, in a lifestyle and you act upon that tendency, then because it goes against what I believe God designed, then I, I, I think that's clear, clearly a sin. It's a very interesting perspective that a lot of newer age uh, cat, like religious people are taking, where historically it's been, if you're gay, it's a sin. Um, but now it's like, if you're gay, it's okay, but you can't act on it. Uh, and it's still, it's homophobic. It's still homophobic, but it is progress overall. But you yeah, know, it's still very homophobic uh, mentality because it's like, yeah, you, it's, it's really, you just can't be who you want to be. It's very hard to compare. You know, it's, it's very, it's very, it's, it's very interesting. I just don't believe in sin because I feel that sometimes being punitive about things can like you don't believe in sin make you repress things. Is and that the, is the hair dye going into your skull? I don't understand. Like instinctually, I was like, but not acting on them would be a sin. Like that's how it feels for me. Like being dishonest to myself that feels wrong. What was the question? Not are different sin like? Uh, do you all see? Yeah, I um, separates us. What was conversation, the conversation, you know, like trying to breach those. Shut up. This one was annoying. <laughs> Some, sin Some sins are worse than others. How could you not sit down? You're an idiot if you didn't sit down. What the fuck? At some point in my life, I was taught that sex is wrong. I was taught that sex is wrong. I don't know if I was ever taught that. I don't think I was ever taught that. I guess like within the context, uh, you know, sex is... I was just taught to marriage. be careful. Um, and so I guess that's how I identified with the question. I had a very strong religious upbringing and I ended up doing a lot of self-harm and I ended up doing a lot of things Jesus, just man. to try and cope with these urges that when I finally gave into them, I went, this is, this is a physical manifestation of love. This is glorious and beautiful and any God which denies me for this, I don't want to have a part of because whatever this is, is I, I know for a fact to be a truth because it is the nature of love. Yeah, um, just responding to your story, uh, it makes me sad to hear that, um, that you decided to hurt yourself. Um, okay. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I still... <laughs> Bro, I want a I wanna fucking book on this guy, the white guy. I'm Hold very curious about his life. What I believe are my beliefs, but at the same time, I forget I which ones are gay. There was a better way for you to talk to someone and to process and to think through um, reconciling how you feel with like what you may have been taught or have read through scripture. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of cultural baggage I think around Christianity that isn't necessarily inherently part of any biblical Christianity. Mm. My understanding that there are some translations, or the Bible may have been mistranslated, to say that like a man shall not sleep with ch a child, not another man. Like where it's like against pedophilia, not against other men. But I'm not sure if that's necessarily true. Even though I grew up in a Christian family, I was I don't recall ever being told that sex was wrong or it was a bad thing. Um, I think I uh, grew up with hot. the understanding that sex is a beautiful thing. It, it was given to us as a gift to enjoy. There's a place where it's it's been designed for, a place where we can enjoy it. And there's a place where it's, it's detestable in the sight of the, the creator, the one who gave it to us. I just don't like the idea that anything's really detestable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I What about like 
child porn is that detestable like what i i i don't like people you know only the sith deal in absolutes and like there are detestable things i i just don't like i don't like her that's it i don't like her so far she's answered every question wrong right no one else has everybody else is expressing their opinion um except the homophobic people they're wrong but uh she's just being like i don't think i don't think that sin exists and things are detestable what fucking world do you live in if somebody walked up and grabbed you by your fucking hair and just like beat the fuck out of you would you be like that wasn't particularly detestable that's just your personal self-expression you know what i mean like there are bad things in the world and like it's a non-nuanced ignorant take to say that there aren't different degrees of badness but wouldn't you say that even sex for you within certain contexts is detestable right Um, like like if it's non-consensual like that's pretty yeah, detestable. Yeah, right? agreed, agreed. So even but, in that, okay, so you're in, she's an idiot. To are I think not de- like that? I have sometimes no control over if it's non-consensual. Wait, wait, what? Wait, I'm confused about what she's saying. I don't understand. Did she say I have no control over if it's not consensual? Is she speaking personally? Does she sexually assault people, or is she speaking generally? Where like. You shouldn't associate the consent with I don't with what she's doing. What dude, she's a fucking dumb. A dumb person, dude. Like, hey, be like, oh yeah, that's a good point. Because what her real perspective seems to be is like, oh, I do things that others would consider detestable. So my personal perspective and on detestability and what my goalpost is for it is different from yours. That's perfectly fine. But to just be like, well, I like to be fucked in the ass with like a fucking cucumber. Uh, while I engage in CNC, I don't find that like that. It's that's it's, I don't know. It, it, I kind of went off a tangent. Point is, is that like there's no nuance to her perspective. Like I just don't fucking understand. People should honor the pronouns others wish to be called. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh. hesitation's enough. Why no? I am off. People should honor the pronouns. The pronoun. Yeah. I identify as they. People don't consider. So here's my perspective on honoring like pronouns. I think that we don't have the right conversation about pronouns in society, and I, I like to have the more rational. Hit. Here's my thing. You, it's none of your business. Anybody's business is none of your business. So if somebody says that they are they, them, he, she, whatever the fuck that they want to be called. Although I wouldn't use neo pronouns because I'm not that fucking. I'm not going to call you Z or Zer. That's just stupid to me. But if you want to be called he, him, they, she, whatever, regardless of your gender expression, I'll call you whatever you ask for because I'm not privy to your specific, like you know, the depth of of who you are in your life experience, right? Um, and to ask a stranger that is ignorant. Now, if you're really going out going to respect people's gender pronouns, uh, just ask them their name and be respectful. What I will say though is that like if you are identifying in a particular way that is disconnected from the way that you're expressing then you're going to be like people are going to go look and be like oh i think that's a little weird you're opening yourself up right so if you are a biological man who who, who's expressing yourself as a biological man and you're saying you want to use like he or excuse me she her pronouns I'm going to respect that, but I'm also going to think that you're weird. Whereas if you're like a, a biological man and you're expressing yourself as a woman, so you're a trans woman, and you're saying you she, her pronouns, I'm going to respect you because like you're being logically consistent, right? But we don't have to have the insight on everybody's lives um, before we make particular decisions to be respectful. Consider it, and I think that like having these conversations about how people want to identify. Also, she's just weird, not because she identifies as they, but she's just fucking stupid. Identify is like really important in a way that we can move things forward and stuff. And yeah, if you're gonna like, hey, if you don't use whatever, you're gonna get fined or whatever. Like that's. Well, no, you I, shouldn't. I'm, you shouldn't be fined for it. Like, if somebody refuses to call me a he, I'm not gonna have a meltdown. I'll be like, okay, I'm not gonna associate myself with you. You're a dickhead. Like legally, we shouldn't force people to correctly gender people but like socially they asked if it was like bad i'm not a big fan no, of that these are conversations but, between us but, though, but right? like, like yeah but otherwise it's just yeah. being respectful yeah they said is it respectful or whatever? The pronoun police <laughs> <laughs> so for me um i never correct people because many times people do confuse me as sir i don't you know it doesn't phase me however i'm born in a female body i'm a she there are times where my girlfriends have said oh my boyfriend isn't that just because of their comfort zone they don't want to have to deal with the whole like social stigma. So you're comfortable with that's very interesting. 
them. That's like a very interesting. This 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 woman, this lesbian woman, is very interesting to me. These are very interesting people because just so you guys know, like historically, a lot of uh, butch lesbian women have identified as men, not because they're trans, but because it was socially um, reprehensible to be a lesbian. So a lot of times, like uh, he him lesbians are lesbians that identify as women but use he him so that they can avoid the social stigma and it's interesting that this person still lives in a, in a sphere where they are where there may be times where they're socially shamed uh for being a lesbian and so their partners will sometimes oh this is my boyfriend just to kind of remove that because this is a butch lesbian and i also want to say too is that i miss butch lesbians because i feel like nowadays butch lesbians are always uh, socially encouraged by their community to identify as like trans people I feel like we're losing butch lesbians, and I like butch lesbians. I think they're pretty cool, man. Like I just, you know, presenting you as a as a male. It when... doesn't phase me. And really, it doesn't phase me at all because my identity and my expressions are masculine, and I've come to the terms and the realization that I don't need to chop up my body into different pieces to fit in the social little box that is man. Hmm. If you want to address me, you can address me as he or oh, she. Oh, so are they trans? Them, Very interesting. Girl, Becky with the good hair, <laughs> or Beck. Yeah. It doesn't. As long as the term is respectful. Yeah, that's fair. I, will take it. I respect that. Uh, I mean, I still. I like that individual because they seem to be a very strong-willed individual. You know, I, I respect strength and of character more than anything else. It's because it's a complicated topic. Because with language, language is powerful. And so, when somebody who I would consider female wants to be called uh, a male, I would want to probably respect that. But um, I still firmly believe that you know, there like God created there to be man and a woman, and. Um, I would like to sit down and talk to that person in depth before um, leaning one way or, or or the other. Yeah. But I think like Papa, what are butch lesbians? Marry masculine lesbians. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Focusing more on like building a relationship instead of just like grilling someone. Why do you feel? You know what I mean? Like just trying. What's to What's wrong with you? Know? Like why? Yeah. No, like let kidding. me sit down. And <laughs> I, I, I like how he asked her specifically, what's wrong with you? Like, I know it was more of like he was encouraging her conversation and agreeing with her, but what is wrong with her? She's so dumb. <laughs> oh just like you like so a, you are like the pronoun plug, police. Yeah. <laughs> America is heading in the right direction when it comes to inclusion and diversity. I mean, we're heading in the right direction. I don't think we're having the right conversations about it. But this was also, this video is three years old. And that, a lot of you guys are like, that's not that long ago. It's a very long time ago socially. We've drastically shifted in the past three years, five years, ten years, more than we've done uh, at any time before that because we have access to social media and things move very quickly online and now in the real world. But I could, I could see you make a general, like, yeah, I think things are going the right direction, but there are flaws to it. And the biggest flaw is that the the, the, the minority of, of every activist group is the loudest screaming. And that hurts the, any, um, did I say minority group? Yeah. No, the minority in any activist group is the loudest screaming. And that hurts, especially uh, because it gets the message muddied a lot of times. But for some reason, we listen to like the one, like a tenth of a percent of a population. And, and then we kind of, um, you know, believe that that extreme perspective is uh, like their monolithic, you know, perspective. It's more like the youth are headed in like inclusion and diversity. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's the institutions of power. I think the youth are really moving our culture forward and like, it's encouraging. To I don't think that she's intelligent enough to just talk anymore. I just don't even think we should listen to her. Now, I can't imagine what it's like to not be able to be who I am and having to hide. So I think it's good in that sense that people finally are living in a, in a world where I can be who I am and I don't have to be ostracized. Is he gay? I, be, I don't remember. I don't know who that I is and isn't gay anymore. In is because, um, you know, I, I have certain values that I, I think are from God. And so th that's why I hesitated a little bit on do I come forward or not. But well, and I, I have a question because I, you know, I'm curious where the sanctity of your marriage comes in. Like, if you can only get married to a woman because you and God and that woman have a relationship that is perfect for you. I'm curious how that affects uh, who we can marry. Yeah. I, I don't think um, the job of a Christian, for example, um, is to get people to behave in a certain moral way that's in line with what the Bible says. I wouldn't be one to probably, say. Probably kind of is. <laughs> say, you can't marry, you can't marry another guy or you can't marry another girl. I would say, first of all, God loves you. You know, God loves you. Yeah, so uh, specifically talking about like Prop 8, 
Um, when Prop 8 came out, I was completely against it. I thought it was foolish and, and quite... Who the fuck is this guy? Did we see him ever up until this point of the video? Is the first time that he spoke? Ignorant. And in, by many churches supporting Prop 8, we basically tell you, told the gay community that we don't care about you, we don't care about how you feel, what you think love is. We're just going to mandate that you can't marry who you say you want to marry. We're adversaries. Yeah, we became adversaries. And, and the church, I think, lost a great position in saying, and coming to people saying, like, we love you. What I think is interesting is that, like, I don't, I, you know, when it comes to gay marriage, we subsidized marriage. You know, we gave you tax benefits if you got married. So you can't deny gay people from getting married. You know, just fundamentally, like, you can't, you can't do that because you've decided to bring the government to it. If you never got tax incentives for being married, I wouldn't give a shit whether or not people could or couldn't get married. That's up to the individual church whether they would actually um, allow people to get married. People should have the right to have sex with anyone they want. Sure, yeah, as long as it's consensual. Anyone? <sighs> okay. No, wait, that's actually, no, wait. No, as long as it's consensual, because I'm like, what about kids? Obviously, but you can't consent as a kid. There you go. Kids can't properly consent. So as long as it's can, so yes, I agree with that statement. As long as it's consensual, and since kids can't consent, it covers that as well. I got nervous for a second. I was like, wait, nobody should say yes, but and they don't. But you can say, you can say yes right. as long as consensually, right? All right, consensually <laughs> with anyone. I okay, yes, in the term anyone except children. Good. Yeah, as humans, we and as creatures of a divine spirit, we have the right to follow our instincts and our sexual urges without punishing ourselves for, you know, wanting a woman or wanting a man. And so, yeah, any, anyone has the right to consensual love making. Very cool. <laughs> so um, the, the reason why I stepped back, and, and I, you guys would, would agree with me, but um, when I was nine years old, I was touched by a family member. I, a lot of loading, buddy. I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh because it's terrible. But like, one of the most jarring experiences as a person is to meet, is to like hear something like that from somebody that you just met. It's like, hey, how are you? Oh, hey, my name's Dave. Oh, it's what your name? Oh, my name's Steve. And when I was a kid, I was molested. And it's like, holy shit. It's like that feels like a that feels like a conversation we have next week. Maybe that's a third date conversation, you know? And I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude and callous, but it's like, holy fuck, bro. Like, that was intense, you know? And, and I understand, like, in this atmosphere, I guess you're more encouraged to talk about this, but Jesus Christ, my man. Holy fuck. And so, you know, that's, I can't step forward when, when that question is asked. And, and I know you guys wouldn't agree with that, and that's, you, you preferred to the very beginning that, you know, if as long as consensual and, and not kids, but that was my experience and Yep. That's crazy, bro. About that. No, I, I I resonate with that as well. I mean I was as well, you know, and it wasn't a family member, thank God. However, it was still uh enough of a tumultuous problem that even when I came out as, as a lesbian I wondered if it had to do with that instant and definitely uh brought up and that's why it was the first thing that I said, you know, because, yeah. you know, one is innocent and doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Crazy. I believe in a higher power. Maybe. I don't really know. I honestly don't know personally. I really don't. I, I, I want to believe in a higher power. Uh, but there's a lot of fucked up shit going on. So sometimes it's hard to believe, you know. I'd love to hear it from your perspective. Of yeah, I'm agnostic. Why you, why you believe in a higher power? I mean, the household I was raised in. Why not? Uh, the analogy of like you can't, one cannot see love, one cannot see air, and it's still there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I started going to more clergymen and tr wanting to understand exactly, you know, my ways of being in the image of a greater creator, understanding I wasn't a mistake. Mm. You know, you know, there is a higher source. There is definitely something that has given me these blessings that have nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the bigger picture of things. I, I think for me, you know, I, I was also raised in a very strong religious background. And just as I cannot deny this part of me that is the way I express love, I'd be dishonest if I said that when I sat down and I prayed and I listened, I didn't hear. 
Oh no, it's time for the heathen. No, <laughs> you have no, to stop. No. You are no mistake. She's just dumb. I, I mean, I can't even say that her perspective is going to be dumb fundamentally, uh, or inherently rather. But she's just so dumb. This this fucking blue haired woman. I resonate with some of the things you said too. Like I do believe in a higher power. I just don't believe in like a typical higher power. And See, this is my problem with her. It's like she doesn't even agree with the, like she could have very, they asked the question, do you believe in a higher power? And she does. And instead of just sitting down and explaining, it's like, I do believe in a higher power, but I don't believe in like the traditional higher powers. That's fine. But instead she just says no to be a contrarian and then sits down and agrees anyway. And it's just so, it's just so annoying. It's just unnecessary. You know, it just annoys me. It's like, just, just fucking say, yeah, I do, but I don't believe in the traditional higher power. Okay, that's fine. But instead, it's like, no, I don't. But I actually do. Like, you just, I fucking don't like this woman. And I also, like, highly. Or this th th the man. I don't know. They identify as they. This person. I really believe in science. So I'm like, I believe in gravity as a higher power. I believe in, like, entropy as a, you Wait, know, what? Fucking, we, what the fuck uh, are you talking? Wait. Oh, okay, we knew. Okay, now she. Okay, now she thinks higher powers are like fucking gravity. Now she's just intentionally taking the words out of context. She's like, yeah, I believe in a higher power, like uh, lasers. That's what she's saying. Yeah, lasers are definitely more powerful. Now we're getting into like an anime power scaling conversation. Like, what's more powerful, a gun or a bazooka? Well, I believe in a higher power because I believe that bazookas are more powerful than a human fucking fist. And it's like, yeah, no shit. But what are you, what are you talking about? You know they're talking about God. When you talk about fucking gravity, unless you pray to gravity, that you know you're being contextually inaccurate. You, uh, oh God, I don't, I don't like this person. And stuff, and I want to always keep searching and always keep questioning and like always trying to find like she, she smokes a lot of weed. Love as possible, I guess. And I believe in other people. She smokes a lot too. of like, weed. Like I believe in that for y'all. You know what I mean? Like if that's what makes you a better person. And you believe in it for them? What does that mean? Feel more Bro. yourself and feel more love. Like I believe in that, you know. But I can't say that I believe it for myself because I, I. Then you don't believe it. I don't understand. Much. Like you could be like, yeah, I don't believe in your God, but I'm respectful, so you do you. But this, she's, she does like that's not believing in their God. That's just believing in people's ability to have freedom of expression and ideas. I, I don't understand freedom of religion. All my eggs in one basket. Somebody's alarm. Guys, alarm. thank you, <laughs> friends. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you all. I'm going to I'm so sweaty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys, this is Jason. From Shut up, Jason. Listen, I hated that fucking blue-haired woman. Um, I, hate, I don't like her. She just annoys the hell out of me. That's really all I needed to tell you guys. Hey everyone, if you liked that video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to follow my Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and TikTok. All links are in the description. Also, check out my Patreon if you'd like to support me even more than you already do. Thank you so much, everyone. I love you all.